so they were so they were trying to, to renegotiate this statute of autonomy and all of the parties agreed on this um, except that when they finally got it through and negotiated with Spain and got it through the Catalan Parliament and got it through the Spanish Congress, each time they had to take some things out because they would say, yes, yes, you can have that, and then they would actually say, no, you can't. Um, this is the, the perennial relationship that Catalonia has with Spain. Um, and so people got very frustrated about this. And this, um, this is the first demonstration that we did, I wasn't there, in 2006. Um, this is a, a demonstration that was about 100,000 people. This is one of our smaller demonstrations. And, and, it was, and, it, and the sign says, we're a nation, we have the right to decide. Um, because that's what Catalans have wanted all this time. They have wanted, in fact, they started out trying to negotiate with Spain, and then this feeling that Spain kept changing the rules, moving the goalposts, and Catalans keep saying, we want to be able to decide, we want to be able to decide our own future, we have a right to. We should have representation. And that, that's what seems to be still elusive. Um, so, so people came out on this, uh, this is actually 10 years ago, this month, February 18, 2006, and they said, and there were a lot of people, and all of a sudden Mars seemed a lot closer. And um, this is the, the second uh, demonstration, which was about a year and a half later, the, the end of 2007. And one of the reasons I want to show you these pictures is because the, part of the, the, the strength of this movement is that is this belief that, that it could actually happen, and it's come a little bit from these um, demonstrations that were just regular people. This is not the politicians, um, and and I was listening a lot to what both John and Shona said about these are these are people that got together just like this. And I have I have hundreds of pictures of people in meeting rooms, a lot a lot of times with a lot fewer people. This is a, this is a great crowd. Um, and trying to figure out what each person could do, the artists, the writers, the filmmakers, the translators, the uh, economists, the lawyers, the, all of the different people wanting to give their part in this struggle. And, um, and so they started with these demonstrations. And then um, there was a guy who, they were really frustrated with the fact that the parties wouldn't uh, cooperate, the Catalan parties, not the Spanish ones. Um, all of them said, yes, we need more powers, we need a better fiscal arrangement, etc., etc. Um, but they didn't talk to each other, so they created a blog. And here I um, go back to what Shona said about social media, absolutely essential, because they're not going to tell our story, we have to tell our story. Um, and they created this blog that was a cross-party blog, it was from, I think, seven different parties. And each day, somebody from a different party would write, and this one guy said, um, his name is Manel, he said, you know, why don't we have a Martin Luther King figure in Catalonia? Like, what, what can we do? And another guy said, yeah, why don't we mar march on Madrid? And somebody else said, yeah, let's march on Brussels. And in a week, they had a thousand people on the Facebook page saying, I'll go to Brussels. Brussels is 1,300 kilometers from, from Barcelona. Um, and that was in uh, September-ish, 2008. They planned the march for, Mar for March 2009, and they actually got 10,000 people to go to Brussels. And they chartered airplanes, they chartered buses, people went in their own cars. Um, totally crazy, and you think, wow, you, you just have this idea. Not the parties, the people getting together saying, we could try this. So at that march in Brussels, there are these two guys that are walking down the street, okay, so now what do we do? And they said, well, why don't we try a popular initiative? That's one of those things where you, in Catalonia, you sign a petition and then they bring it to the parliament. And they said, we should have a popular initiative, we'll bring it to the parliament, we'll make them have a referendum. And so um, they tried that, actually, in June 2009, and the parliament, including the pro-independence party, said, ah, it's not time yet, sorry. So they, they voted against it. And in, so there was this one guy, one of the guys who was walking down the street in, um, in Brussels. He was from a small town, 8,000 people. It's called Arrange the Moon. It's the town that you can kind of see in these pictures. And um, he was on, he was uh, part of a movement in Arrange, kind of a lefty movement. And he went to the, to the mayor, one of the council people, and he said, you know, we should have a referendum. And they got it through the city council in this tiny little town that they were going to consult the people on September 13, 2009, about this popular initiative, about whether or not Catalonia should be independent. And um, the Falange, the Falange is a legal uh, party in Spain. It's a fascist party. It's the, the party of Franco. Um, got wind of it. Um, and they said, well, we're going to march in Arrange that very same day. And Ciudadanos, which is an anti-independence uh, party, 
they said, you can't have that vote, that's illegal. You're not allowed to ask people whether they want to be independent or not. That's, that's, you know, you can't do that. So they brought it to a judge. And the judge said, yes, the Falange can march in the rings, and no, they're not allowed to have the vote. And all of a sudden, it was in all the newspapers, all the newspapers. And this is, again, where social media comes in. So people were talking about it. So, and, and the people in the ring said, well, we're going to have a vote anyway, and we're going to do it. You don't want us to have it in the city hall, we'll have it next door. And that's what they did in a, in a community center that was next door. And, and every day, there were more threats from the Falange and um, determination from the people at this tiny little town, 8,000 people. It's just up the, the road from Barcelona, about a half an hour. And on September 13th, there was, I mean, every person in Catalonia who could be there was there, was packed. You can see on this picture here. It's a beautiful little town. If you ever get there, it's worth a visit. Not on the beach, just up from the beach. Um, and about 45%-ish, uh, I, I get way beyond the numbers, came out to vote. That was more than voted in the, several of the last elections. It was more than voted for um, for the for the, becoming part of the EU. Um, and it, I think it was like 97% yes. And all of a sudden, two things happened out of remains. One is, people were like, wow, well, maybe three things. This really could happen. We could really do this. We really want to vote. And then all of these people who had come to Arrange to see what was going on said, I want to do this in my town. We're going to do it in every little town all over Catalonia and lots of big ones. And over the course of between 2009 and 2011, they had what they called consultas, which is a way of saying kind of non-official polls. Consultations would be the literal translation, but um, and in five, more than 500 Catalan cities and towns, including Barcelona, including Gino, including all of the big ones. And it was about 800,000 people who ended up voting because of this one guy who said, you know, we should just do this. The other thing that came out of Arrens was the Asamblea, which is the group that I'm a part of, the Catalan National Assembly. It started out because there were these four guys who were there, probably in that picture somewhere, saying, okay, now what are we going to do? How are we going to keep these people moving? And so they said, well, we should start a group. And they said, well, you know, we always fight when we get together because you're from that party and I'm from this party. So they said, we'll have an email list and it'll be anonymous. Nobody will know who anybody else is. We'll all have numbers. And that's what they did. There were about 20 of them that started. And they corresponded without knowing who everybody was, trying to organize this group to start. And, and they didn't, so nobody knew which party, so they actually could get stuff done. Um, and as their organizing, these consultas are going on in the rest of Catalonia, and that's what's going on between 2009 and 2011, except that in 2010, trying to keep this going, the uh, Constitutional Court, the Spanish Constitutional Court, finally says, you know what, that statute of autonomy that you negotiated four years ago, and that the rightist people's party says, you know, it gave you much too, power. They find, much, too much power, they finally came out with a ruling, and the ruling said, um, one, Catalan can't be a preferent language, which it had been since mm, the early 80s, particularly in education, but also in administration and other areas. And two, um, the Catalonia is not a nation. You could call yourselves that, but it doesn't really mean anything. It has no meaning. And that was a blow to, to, to Catalan's... Um, it just felt humiliated. They were really, really angry. And they knew that this ruling was coming, and um, so... Um, the ruling came down on June 28th. This happened on July 10th. They got together all of the different political parties who had been negotiating the statute of autonomy, and they were all united in saying, this is not right. The, the, the Spanish government can't just change the rules whenever they want to. And a million people, a million people came out on the street. This is 2010. Just to say, we are a nation. We have a right to decide our own future. And then this belief, then, then, then Mars was like next door. You know, you felt like, wow, there are all these people. I'm not alone. I'm not the one. The word they use is creepy. It means uh, somebody who's kind of eccentric, who's kind of who's very passionate about something. So passionate that you're like, oh, this. Sucks. <laughs> um, and but it wasn't just one person. It wasn't just two people. It was a million people. It was a lot of people. And it got people really excited and wanting to do stuff. And so, and all these things kind of came together. The consultas were. Um, it was hard to get people to come out because they were completely non. Um, uh, not official, they didn't have any government support at all. Remember, the political parties are still kind of wavery about all of this. And um, so they, uh, so, so there wasn't a lot going on. So, um, so then we get to 2012. 2012, the, the Kabbalah National Assembly decided that they're going to make an even bigger demonstration. 
And they do this interesting thing, which um, to, to gather support, because it's still, you know, oh, the, yeah, there was a lot of people, but you know, that happened in 1977 too, nothing came out of it. And so they said, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out in Yeda. Yeda is in the, the western hinterlands of Catalonia, if you will. And they started there, and then they did this march in all of the different towns all over Catalonia until they reached uh, Barcelona on September 11th. And again, it was massive, so many people, a million two, I think they said, came to the streets. And the president of Catalonia, who had insisted that he was not in favor of independence, that he was going to try to get a fiscal pact with Madrid, he was going to get a better financial deal, really, I'm going to be able to do that. Um, he would, did not come to the demonstration, and, but he did receive the, the, um, uh, the organizers, the ANC, the president of the ANC, went to the parliament, received by the president, and then the president said, okay, look, there's all these people, they're pushing us to do something, what are we going to do? So he went to Madrid, and went to talk to Mariano Rajoy, and he said, look, I need this fiscal pact because that's what I promised. And Rajoy did something very stupid. He didn't say, oh, maybe, we'll talk about it, or perhaps next year, or another time. He just said no. And Mas, the president, came back to Catalonia, and he said, there's nothing to be done, and he called no elections. He called, and he said, you know, we can't have a referendum right now because we didn't campaign on a platform of having a referendum, so we'll have new elections in November. And in those elections, he actually lost support, but independence in general grew a lot. And throughout all of 2013, this is where the people come in. We did all sorts of things, crazy things. We lit candles. This is on the church steps in Girona. We had huge flags. We, um, this, the picture on the right, which you can barely see, is a Harley in the middle of Arizona. These three people went to the United States, and they went from Capitol building to Capitol building in different states, handing out books and, and Barca, Barcelona f football team uh, jerseys with independence flags on them. Um, the people, on, there's graffiti. There was conferences, thousands of conferences. There were meetings. There was just anything that there were concerts. There was a human tower building. Anything that you can think of to get people motivated, get people thinking about it, get people thinking, what can I do? What, how can I bring my part to this? And, and all of it was, the, the, the couple on National Assembly, meanwhile, was saying, okay, well, we're going to do something even bigger. You know, we already got a million people on the street. We're going to show them how organized we are, how mobilized we are, how, how well we can do things. And so they uh, decided that they were going to um, take a, a page out of the book of the Baltic countries, and they, um, who had the Baltic Way in 1989, um, they held hands from Estonia is the one on the top, and Lithuania is the one on the bottom. Lots and lots of people. And so the couple and said, well, we're going to do that too. We're going to, all the way from Tartus on the French border, down to Linaros, I think, on the, on the Valencian border. And it's 400 kilometers, 250 miles. And you had to figure out how to get people to all the different places. Most of the population is in Barcelona. Um, there's very few people down south, very few people in, uh, up north. You had to sign up for this demonstration. You had to give your ID number and your first and last name. It was, it was unheard of, um, but it worked. And one of the ways that it worked was that there were these, um, there are Catalans all over the world, as I'm sure there are Welsh people all over the world, um, and the Catalans in all the different places said, we're going to have a Catalan way in our places. There were 127 of them, I think. From the, China, the, wall, the Great Wall of China, there's New York City, there's London, the, uh, I think that one is Tibet. Um, it, they were everywhere, it was amazing. And, and, and so we used social media to show pictures of all of these people saying, you know, we want to vote, we want to be able to decide our future. And that got people organized in Barcelona and Catalonia to, to come to this march. Yeah. I wish you could see these pictures there, because they're amazing. Um, and, and it worked. And there was this, this incredible thing, you know, Catalans are always trying to, um, to get the world to notice. Because, you know, all of our news goes through Madrid. All of our, all of our international news, as I imagine that happens here as well. Um, and they don't often tell our story the way we might like to tell it ourselves. And so we try to, you know, do crazy things so that people will notice. But one of the things that I remember feeling when we were all standing there holding hands on September 11, 2013 was, there are a lot of people here. We have an amazing strength. We can really do this, all of us. And we're all necessary. And all these volunteers telling people where to go and where to park. It was, it was this incredible feeling of nationhood and organizing and, and, and we can decide. And the, 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 the political parties are still just kind of all over the map. They're not, you know, we're pushing them and they're saying, 
maybe next, you know, not yet. Um, got lots and lots of international press, as you can barely see these pictures. Um, and the one thing that we did get out of the, the Catalan way, one specific political game, was that the president finally said, okay, in December, he said, I promised to have a question and a date for the referendum by the end of 2013, and he did. And, the, and it was a two-part question, which was kind of a drag, which was, do you want to be a state, and do you want to be an independent state? And there's, there's a lot of backstory about why, but basically we had a question and a date. And the date was November 9th, 2014. So then we spent the whole 2014 saying we wanted to vote, because Spain is still saying, you're not allowed to vote. Uh, we, we looked toward Scotland with a lot of envy because they actually got to vote. We didn't get to vote. We, uh, you know, we had a vote, but it wasn't official, it wasn't real, it wasn't uh, organized by the government. Um, so, so we're fighting kind of different battles. Spain is, um, has a rather low level of democracy, uh, to say the least. And so we had to spend the entire 2014 begging for this chance to vote. We sent our representatives from the Catalan Parliament to the of Congress to ask officially for the right to have a referendum. They said no. We asked Rajoy and he said no. We had our own, we created our own law in the Catalan Parliament for a non-binding referendum law about anything, not about independence. And that was passed on September 27, 2014. And the Constitutional Court, which took four years to rule on the Statute of Autonomy, decided by Monday that they would review that. And so they suspended it. Two days. It was pretty good. Um, so that meant that we weren't allowed to vote. Uh, this is still, these are still pictures from the, the march. So the, the September 11, 2014 march was even bigger. It was 1.5 million people. Um, it was a huge 11 kilometer long flag shaped as a letter V in the middle of Barcelona, the Gran Via and the Diagonal, two major streets. V for vote, V for via, which means the way, like the long way. V for voluntad, which means will and B for Victoria, which means victory. Um, and not only did we line up 11 kilometers long, but everybody had to have red and yellow t-shirts um, so that we could make this incredible flag. And that's just one tiny bit of it, 11 kilometers long. Again, we had to sign up to be in a particular spot because you didn't want everybody in the same intersection. We wanted to fill out the whole thing, which we did. Um, there are these murals. I don't remember who that one is, I can't see it from here. Um, but I had murals of, of world leaders saying Catalonia wants to vote, because remember we hadn't voted yet, this is still September. Um, but we have this vote coming up. And, um, and, and, and now there's all this political wrangling about whether we're going to be able to vote on November 9th, because our law has been ruled uh, that they're going to, they're going to, the Constitutional Court says it's, it's not allowed, so we're not going to be able to. Um, and the President said, well, we're going to do it anyway. And the Spanish said, no, no, you can't do that. In fact, they've taken it to court and said, you know, you're, you weren't allowed to have that vote. But he went ahead. And well, the way he went ahead was it wasn't going to be a government vote. They called it a participatory process. This is the level of democracy in Spain. You're not allowed to have a referendum. You're not allowed to have uh, a non-binding referendum. And you're not even allowed to have a participatory process, which meant basically that volunteers like me, they asked for, for um, people all of the people who wanted to, to volunteer to run the referendum. 40,000 people signed up over a weekend. Um, and that's what we did. These are people uh, making the vote happen, basically. Um, 2 million 300,000 people out of about 5 million electors, so about 40% came out to vote. 80% of those people said yes, they wanted to stay, yes. They wanted it to be independent. Um, but it was non-binding. Participatory, it wasn't even a uh, non-binding referendum, it was a participatory process, and the, the court has now ruled that it was unconstitutional and has pressed charges against the president and all sorts of other people. Um, so where does that leave us? So, what, what, so the president said, okay, well, what you can do is we can have a plebiscite election. We can have elections that take the place of a referendum. It's all just so contorted. It's, you know, it would be so easy just to vote on it. You'd think that in a 21st century democracy in Europe, you could actually have a vote on something. So the people, you know, organized again, and they said, all right, well, we gotta keep pushing, we gotta keep pushing, we're gonna have this election, and the political parties are again, and they're fighting against each other. <clears throat> this is 2015, 1.5 million people, 
uh, on the Medivianna. This one, notice it's, there's, there's not a lot of flags in this one, uh, because they, they call us nationalists when we have flags. So, so this one is, um, <laughs> all of these, there are ten different colors uh, that symbolize the different values that we would like to have in the Kalman Republic. Democracy, uh, sustainability, uh, technology, education, I forget them all, but they're all, they're all good things to have in a republic. Um, and this was to, to insist that we want to have this election, and since this, is, this election is the only thing that we can do to win, you know, we just keep to, to win our independence. And so we keep trying everything that we can, organizing, you know, the way we can. Sorry, can you go for a tender? Again, it's just huge numbers of people coming out and saying, listen to us, listen to us. And it's just regular people, it's not the politicians. The politicians aren't there. It's, it's people. Um, so here's where we are now. Um, we did win that election. We won 48% of the vote, voted for pro-independence parties. 39% voted for anti-independence parties, and then there was 11% that voted for parties that didn't have a position. So where does that leave us? It leaves us still not having really a clear idea of what we're going to do. We have um, a majority in the parliament, and the parliament has agreed with the new president who uh, just took office uh, at the beginning of January, um, has agreed to start a roadmap towards independence. And that roadmap has three important things. One of them is um, to create a tax agency, because we need to be able to collect our own taxes. Second, to create social security agencies so that we can distribute the money between education and, and health and, and et cetera, and retirement. And the third is to create a law of transitional jurisprudence so that there isn't uh, a void in the legal system when we finally declare independence, so that the laws that we don't have, um, we'll, we'll use the laws from Spain until we have our own. Now, our new president, Carlos Puigdemont, um, has, uh, is pro-independence, and he has agreed to move this uh, roadmap forward. And, uh, but, we're, but we're not, the, the, the civil society, the way they call it in Catalonia, um, we're not waiting for him to do it. We're still, keeping moving forward, pushing, doing everything that we can to um, the, the couple of National Assembly's um, bid right now is to, one, widen the social majority so that if we ever do get a referendum, we'll be able to we'll, we'll vote in favor of it, um, to have a constituent process so that we can decide exactly what kind of country we want. Um, so these are the things that, that we're working on now. And But meanwhile, the, the, the parliament, the first pro-independence majority in its history is moving forward on this roadmap. And the, the idea is that within 18 months, which is now a month and a half ago, um, there will be new developments. So, um, and I'm really excited to, to hear the other stories and to, to, to learn more about what's going on here because it feels like there's a lot that we can learn from each other. So, thank you.